of SCSU TV News. I'm Julie Mao Ortiz. And I'm Jazzy Peralta. Today we will be covering a campus drug warning, the University Electronic Waste Drive, update you on Southern sports, and more. But first, a very serious story from the university. The Dean and President of Student Affairs, Jules Tetrasalt, recently sent out an email warning students about the drug situation going on on other campuses in Connecticut, where five students from Wesleyan University were arrested after being held responsible for selling 11 students an illegal substance called Molly. Now, each of the vic victims were taken to the hospital with life-threatening complications, and the university wants students to be aware and have conversations with their friends about the dangers of the drug. For more information, contact the Alcohol Resource Center. SESU's Rape Aggression Defense Program starts back up on March 24th and will continue every Tuesday until April 21st. The Rape Aggression Defense System is a program of realistic self-defense tactics and techniques for women. Two-hour classes run from 6 to 8 p.m. in Con Hall's seminar room. If you do enroll in the program, you are expected to attend all the scheduled meetings. Spots are limited and are filling up fast, so make sure you sign up early. This year, a new Greek organization was recognized on Southern's campus. Here's Jazri with the story. Despite many trials and tribulations, Sigma Iota Alpha has become the newest addition to Greek life here at Southern. It is the only Latina-based chapter on campus. Jessica Olivo, who was part of the founding line, spoke about her challenges. It's kind of hard to stay interested uh, for about two years, especially when you know, you've been knocked down and then built back up. Um, not because of the university or anything like that, but it's it was kind of hard. It was really hard to recruit and to bring, um, you know, get women that were interested in the sorority because we weren't here. So, you know, we would have informationals. We wouldn't have a lot of people there. So it's a bit downing. Um, but now, you know, I think that that was one of the, like, hardest challenges. Greek Life Advisor Eric LaCharity spoke about the characteristics that Southern looks for in organizations. How does it differentiate? What are the values and ideals of the organization um, that might bring something new that students might not um, have the opportunity to take advantage of at the time? Um, and how like it'll just um, kind of take our Greek life program to the next level. Um, so SIA definitely does that. I mean, they're so strong on sisterhood and their cultural values. Just finally being here and being greeted onto campus with open walk open arms and have people tell us like if you need any help like let us know we're here for you and um, just the support is really great. One of the goals of Sigma Iota Alpha is to expand awareness on Latino and diverse cultures. Thanks to the determination of these young women that will now continue here on this campus. Reporting from Southern, I'm Jazri Peralta. On Tuesday, March 10th, students and staff filled the Adante Student Center Ballroom in style for the Multicultural Center's spoken word and instrumental event, Uncensored. The event consisted of numerous musicians, poets, and performers taking the stage to showcase some of the university's talent. If you're absolutely done using your old computer, printer, or any other electronic device that you're no longer using, bring it to SCSU's third annual Recyclemania Electronic Waste Drive. Now, the drive did start on March 9th, but it will continue until March 12th, so you still have a little bit of time to get those items to the Facilities Operations Warehouse on Fifth Street. Students on campus are becoming concerned with the road conditions here at Southern and would like to see a serious change before some serious vehicle damage occurs. Julia Marr has the story. Southern students have been complaining about the potholes on Pine Rock Ave for months. Part of the strip located on Southern's campus belongs to two towns, Hamden and New Haven. And now that Hamden has fixed their side of the street, Southern students like senior Merritt Ruff think New Haven should fix theirs too. Uh, they fixed half the road and they're just leaving the other half undone. Ruff says the conditions make it hard for students walking to class. You get splashed and everything. You have to walk over towards the cemetery in order to stay dry. Not only do the potholes cause problems for walkers, but they're causing damages to cars too. Students are driving down Pine Rock Ave every single day, especially those who live in the North Campus, like Veronica Young, a senior who got this flat tire after driving over a pothole on the street. This is the second time that this has happened to me, and the town has yet to fix the problem, yet on the Hamden side they did, and I feel like the town should be responsible for fixing it. Young has questions for the city of New Haven. When are they going to fix the potholes? Are they going to fix the potholes? Jeff Poscosolito, the Chief of Operations for New Haven Public Works, has an answer. Pine Rock, of course, as I stated, was identified by the Department of Public Works 
and agreed upon by the committee for some type of maintenance. And that maintenance, again, would be a shim phase performed by Public Works in probably in the late spring, early summer of um, 2015. In the meantime, Posco Solito said the city will patch holes using temporary material. Reporting from Southern, I'm Julie Mar Ortiz. Julie Mar, I've been down a couple of those roads with those potholes, and let me tell you, they are no joke. Yep, and they're going to be like that for a while. The university has enacted a new replacement policy for all undergrad students, Jazz, so students must be registered for the replacement course prior to filling out the grade replacement um, contract. So before you fill out the contract, you have to be registered for the course. You can do that online at the registrar's website, and the deadline is the last day of add drop period for every semester. And if you have any questions regarding that, uh, please contact your academic advisor. And now, here's Trayvon Freeman with the latest in Southern Sports. Thank you, ladies. Let's talk some Southern Sports. Baseball season is underway. Southern's men's team is off to a 5-5 five five overall start. The Owls are coming off back-to-back -back wins against St. Michael's. The team will have their first home game against Southern New Hampshire on March 21st. SESU softball will begin their season as soon as they travel to Claremont, Florida for a week, and then they'll open up against LIU Post on March 19th. The gymnastics team plays fourth in the quad meet against University of Maryland, William & Mary, and the University of Bridgeport. Rachel Dulatore was one of the top scorers for the Owls. The team will travel to Westchester to, com to compete on March 14th. And the men's basketball team earned fifth seed in the East Region for NCAA Division II tournament during the selection show that aired on March 9th. The team will travel to face the University of Bridgeport in the first round on March 14th. After last year's season, the Owls look to make another run at a national championship. And then the plan is to just um, make sure from a confidence standpoint and a chemistry standpoint, everyone stays together and everyone's playing at a high level confidence wise um, leading into the tournament next weekend. And speaking of men's basketball, with all the success provided by the coaches and great athletes on the team, there is one player you may not know about. In college basketball, most teams have the typical characterized athletes. The playmaker, the shooter, the captain, and even the crowd pleaser. But what about these guys, the ones who don't receive all the attention and still cheer on their teammates each game? For Southern Connecticut, there is one player who is beyond supportive. However, when his name is called, this happens. Meet Michael Bazzuto, a 6'3 guard from Wilkin, Connecticut and a sophomore for SASU men's basketball. As an All-State and Team MVP at Wilkett High School, Bazzuto was ready for the next level. With offers from top Division III schools, he chose to walk on at Southern, a Division II college. I visited a couple schools. I, had, um, I went up to Eastern and Wentworth was interested in a couple, a couple other Division III schools. And When I came to Southern, I just fell in love with the campus and everything. Co the coaches were real welcoming and I knew right away that I wanted to come here. Although only in his second year, Bazzuto learned there is better talent on a college court. Previously considered the top guy in high school, he figured out a way to adjust. It was difficult at first to change roles like that, but um, I got used to it and I accepted it. And I play my role, I come to practice every day, work hard, do what I gotta do. He may not be a starter, but head coach Mike Donnelly credits Bazzuto's personality and skill set as a reason why he belongs on the team. Uh, he's a great kid. Um, good basketball player as well, and a really good student. So he fit the, the really the three main criteria that we looked uh, look for when we bring in recruits to the program. We knew he was a really good person. We knew that he worked hard on the basketball court. Was a good player, and then most importantly, that he was a committed uh, student academically. So he was a no-brainer for us. Not only is he appreciated by coaches, the team enjoys playing with Bazudo. Captain Luke Houston admires his work ethic. It's great having Bazudo here at, at Southern Home. He works so hard, he doesn't get a lot of the recognition, but he comes every day motivated, ready to work, and uh, I can't say enough good things about him. Besides his dedication and hardworking mentality, Bazuda is more specifically known for something special, the glasses he plays with. So what do his teammates think of them? 
Man, that, that's his thing. I mean, everyone has his thing. Batman has a mask. He has goggles. Goggles is his trademark. Um, that's all you can say is his trademark. I've never seen anybody wear those before. Um, I mean, it's it's his thing. Now, what's the real story behind them? It's been my trademark ever since fifth grade. And like I said, people have heckled me for it, but I embrace that. They're like the shoes in, in like Mike. <laughs> like, I need them to play. Moving forward, Bazuto expects the team to continue to improve, and he wants to become a better player himself. Keep making the NCAA tournament, keep getting farther and farther, win a couple more championships, get a couple more rings, I would love that. This offseason, I personally, I know I need to get in the weight room, get a little bigger, and work on my defense, my uh, lateral quickness. Reporting from SESU TV, I'm Trayvon Freeman. And our National Guard Athletes of the Week are... Samantha Menachini from Gymnastic, and Nick Vivellio from the baseball team. That's it for Southern Sports today. Let's send it back to the desk. Thank you, Trey, and thank you for watching. I'm Julie Mar Ortiz. And I'm Jazzy Peralta. For more updates, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and watch us on Channel 919. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you next week. Have a great spring break, everybody.